So it's been about 100 hours I've spent, probably more than that, on doing all my daily December videos between shooting and editing and uploading and making thumbnails and stuff for only one month of work. But I just wanted to talk about how I really think that it's made me kind of realize some things about sort of my work schedule and my workflow. So the first thing I probably learned is that I should probably get a better camera just so I can make the editing process easier and just make it a more enjoyable experience to people because so I've talked about it before, but this can't, my phone camera has a tiny sensor, but it also is just like, it auto adjusts a white balance. So my, the, the clothes I'm wearing or just even me moving around in the frame just drastically changes the way the image looks. Not to mention, it like doesn't have a great, you know, performance in the dark. Even when I have filming lights set up, you can still see a lot of grain in the image. So, I think really it'd just be a disservice if I didn't just at least try to go out and get a proper camera and just, you know, make it easier on myself for being able to go back and sort of change things in editing but I mean I use a tripod right now and like I'm already accustomed to cameras so I don't think it'd be that much of a change if I went to something like a black magic pocket and or just not even something as high end as that and just use that instead lesson number two is I in trying to speed up editing and make myself go faster I feel like I've probably cut too many corners because I look at sort of what I've been making during this whole month and there's like a lot of like mistakes and I'm embarrassed about it like the audio cuts in too quick and sometimes there's like random black frames and like there's not as much graphics as I think what people would be accustomed to like sometimes there's graphics sometimes there's not just because I'm super concerned about getting the video out in a timely manner that putting in a graphic or finding a video would not have been worth it. So I think kind of, I need to find a happy medium between my previous sort of production of making things on a monthly basis or just taking long ass time on videos and making things super duper quick. If I'm not going to take my time with video editing, you know, why am I going to, you know, cut the, spend the t all that time cutting the video down if I'm not going to put the full effort into putting graphics on screen. I might as well just do a one shot, record everything all in one go, and then upload it straight to YouTube. So one of the things I am glad though that I did this for is that one of my main concerns was that I wasn't going to have enough ideas for daily December just because stuff I've done before is just very hyper pertinent to me. And so if it wasn't sort of a personal experience I had, then maybe it, I couldn't make a video on it. But now that I've kind of done so many different videos and so many different topics, I now have tons of different jumping off points related to those that I now have a notebook full of like 15 different video ideas or more. And like, I could just take those and do those in the future later. And so that's really nice. Now, I think it's daunting in the sense that it's a never-ending thing, right? Of things you want to get done, but you never do. Oh, and you just keep coming up with more ideas. But you know what? That's a good problem to have. So thing number four I learned was that uh, I should probably just script things when I, when I shoot a video. Because I know it probably would take time, but shooting a video... Like, it, it would take three minutes, like, three minutes of actual footage you guys would see. That would be about 20 minutes of recording. And then, it'd be even worse for videos close to 10 minutes, because that'd be over an hour. And I did multiple takes, you know, just to make sure I had a bunch of different times I did it. But there's just lots of periods where, like, I'm just sitting there thinking about the next thing I'm going to say. Because, like, I, I'm just constructing the argument that I'm making, or the thing I'm talking about. Like right at that very second. You know, it's actually starting to hail out a little bit, so let's, let's go back inside. Now, I'm always apprehensive when calling myself a filmmaker, right? 
well, kind of the reason why is that even though in my college I'm in the film department and, you know, I, I edit stuff together, I edit movies together, so why are you not a filmmaker? But it's just outside of editing. I just don't really feel like any of my stuff is that good. Like, I had edited together a short film for a, my sound class, and it's just like I just look at my acting in it and just a camera composition, and it's all fucking dog shit. I don't know, man. It's just she said something about her not feeling it anymore, but it's total bullshit. I'm glad I like doing videos in the low stakes realm of YouTube where I get to slap a video on a tripod and then, you know, not have to worry about adjusting anything after I initially set it up, hopefully, and then just edit the video and then put it out and not have to worry about setting up the camera different angles and adjusting, you know, the focus between takes and between different shots and between different shots of different takes and stuff. And I'm glad that videos, at least, that I can be me, that I don't have to, like, try to pretend to act and read off a script that is clearly meant for somebody who is totally different, right? That, you know, has different experiences and is, is different from the person I actually am. It's weird thinking about it because YouTube is like not traditional media, right? Like, like obviously you, know, you use cameras, you use lights, you use a lot of the same equipment, but like, like movies and TV, they are scripted. They have actors, you know, people move the camera around. They're trying to tell a story. YouTube doesn't necessarily have to be that way. My favorite videos on YouTube are when people talk about video game shit. That has no story. That has no character arc. And so, just kind of thinking about it and going through all my film classes, it's just very interesting that, you know, sort of what I like and my sort of fam f favorite sort of stuff is all from YouTube. But the way that people are teaching is how to make a narrative and so you know it kind of begs the question of is you know youtube sort of you know is content sort of kind of trying to be more like film and like tv that's trying to be recognized or is sort of film and tv trying to be pulled closer to youtube sort of more experimental not necessarily reliant on the story now why i bring all this up is because like, I, I kind of think that when I graduate college that I'll probably be editing stuff like commercials or, you know, movies or TV. Or be probably an assistant editor, right? I don't actually do any editing. <laughs> like, i actually putting things together, but, but YouTube is my passion, right? Where it's not that traditional format. And it makes me kind of wonder, is there really a space for being both a YouTube editor and like editing, you know, independent movies. Now I know there's obviously short films on YouTube and there's like, you know, guys like this guy edits that put out YouTube videos that teach people how to edit, but like that's really oriented in the traditional model, right? Like short films are independent movies that are just being put up on YouTube instead of being <laughs> showcased in a theater somewhere a couple times and then never being seen again. And then this guy edits, like, he's, his content is not, like, it's all just orienting people towards movie making, like, traditional movie making. He's not making videos talking about things like video games or controllers or, you know, sort of, uh, not sort of non-narrative type stuff, really. Now, obviously, there's tutorials for teaching sort of YouTube editing, but it just sucks that, like, at least from my perspective, those guys aren't as around as much. Like my favorite editor is probably Taryn Van Hemer from Linus Tech Tips. I've talked about him before, but it sucks that like he's so busy with his job that he can't really be around. Like he just make, he puts out these megalithic videos that are like super long, like his editing tutorials or his color grading, but like he doesn't talk about really like specific things on a regular basis. And because like Cha things change so much in sort of his sphere that I, I see kind of the way he's set up now, or at least what I can see of it from last tech tip videos. And it's just like, it's just kind of frustrating to see that, you know, he's just too busy to explain how he's improved himself or changed his workflow and stuff. 
kind of one of the reasons why I do, do my own videos is that I tried being other people's editors before. Like, I've emailed people, be like, hey, you know, here's stuff I've done. But either they've emailed me saying, you know, I can't afford you, or they always got somebody in their pocket. And so it's always hard to, like, find somebody on YouTube who's, like, you know, prospering and growing that doesn't already have somebody like that in their pocket. It's just kind of discouraging, man. Like, seems like YouTubers all really already have people. And, you know, in order to get practice outside of class, because, you know, class work on big projects, but it's not like we have a lot of throughput. So in order to get my skills sharper or faster, I just have to do this. I'm just about headed in. So with all that said, all my fears and doubts and hard work, laid out and whatnot. You know, let's just see where the new year takes me. So anyways, have a great 2020.